let's talk about vermiculite or vermiculite concrete specifically and five things that I want you to know about vermiculite concrete if you're going to try working with or making vermiculite concrete for yourself. I mean, just have at it. Go ahead, mix your own vermiculite concrete, figure out these five things for yourself. Or you could just listen to this short YouTube video and probably get a leg up on doing this and having it working out to your advantage. So let me just jump right in here and tell you the first thing that I want you to know is that vermiculite comes in different grain or coarse sizes. It comes in a coarse, a medium, or a fine grain. And depending on your application, if you're doing a concrete made from vermiculite, most likely the fine grain is what you would want. It's a little bit hard to find. You're probably going to struggle to find large volumes of it. The medium grain is more readily available than the finely ground vermiculite product. Let me show you an example here of the two. Okay. So I don't have the coarse one because I never use that. It's very large pieces, up to half inch um, in size, and that's way too much for making a, an efficient concrete or an effective concrete. So here are the two more common grain sizes that you'll be dealing with. The fine one, if you could find it, you're doing great in the large four cubic foot size bags, but more likely you're gonna end up with this product here. There's nothing wrong with this. You can definitely work with this. You can make a really great uh, vermiculite based concrete with it, but I wouldn't go any larger than that. So medium is about the largest you're looking for and keep your eyes open for large bags of the fine grain. If you could find that, get your hands on a couple bags of that. So what else can we talk about here? Well. Here's something I would want you to know about vermiculite. It's crazy absorbent. It's like the most absorbent thing I've ever encountered in my life. I've had a problem at work before where there was a big paint spill and they couldn't figure out a way to clean it all up. And we had a bag of vermiculite around, we threw it on there and it solved it immediately. It's so effective. The catch here is that if you're not cleaning up a spill, but you're making concrete, if you go ahead and you put this dry vermiculite into your concrete mix, well, you've basically ruined the mix because it's gonna steal all the moisture out of that mix and there's not gonna be any left for hydration of the cement component. So if you're going to mix a vermiculite concrete product, do yourself a huge favor and pre-wet all of the vermiculite aggregate that you're gonna be working with. And it's gonna take a lot of water because it's crazy absorbent. So you make this vermiculite concrete and you're probably expecting it's not gonna be as strong as regular concrete or mortar and you would be right, but you probably would be underestimating just how weak this vermiculite concrete's going to be. It's a, it's a massive strength compromise. As soon as you start deviating from the full strength, full weight concrete and mortar mix designs to any sort of lightweight concrete application, you are giving up strength and it's not a linear drop, that's for sure. Let me give you an example here. So here I have a brick of concrete, nothing too fancy here. 5.22 kilograms, it's pretty heavy. Here we have the same size brick, but this is a vermiculite concrete made with three parts vermiculite to one part cement. This one weighs 1.94 kilograms, so less than half the weight. That's pretty appreciable, but it's way less than half the strength. So it's half the weight, but way less than half the strength. So that's an important consideration. Anytime you're dealing with a vermiculite concrete mix, you have to plan for and account for the fact that it is going to be substantially weaker than any traditional concrete or mortar application. What else do I want you to know about working with vermiculite concrete? Well, something I want you to know is that it's actually kind of tricky to trowel this stuff. It doesn't really lend itself well to smooth, easy troweling. Most masons would describe it as being very sticky. It has a very sticky-like property when you're troweling it, and as such, it tends to hang up on your trowel and doesn't finish at all like the standard concrete or mortar that you're used to. So let me give you a little tip here on how you're gonna deal with that problem. When you're mixing your vermiculite concrete right near the end of the batch, go ahead and add a very small splash of liquid dish soap into the mix. This very small amount of soap is going to make the vermiculite a lot less sticky, 
a lot less inclined to stick to your trowel, but it's not going to vastly compromise the strength or integrity of the mix by any means. Just a little something that you can do to help make the placing and finishing of your vermiculite concrete a little bit easier. This brings me to my fifth point about vermiculite that I want you to know in that when you are batching it, as I was just talking about, normally when I'm batching concrete or mortar, let it, let it spin, let it mix. The longer it spins or mixes and the more well it, those components integrate together, the better the concrete mix will be. But that's not the case with vermiculite. Not at all, actually. You want to mix your vermiculite together until it's well consolidated, but then stop immediately. If you were to continue to mix and continue to mix, what will happen is the grains of your vermiculite will not just break down into the, you know, a smaller fine size. They actually collapse and more or less disintegrate and the bulk of your yield can be lost by more than half. That's very important because you've planned for the amount of materials that you're needing for what you're doing. And if you lose half of the bulk of your yield because you're mixing your vermiculite too long, well, that's not gonna be good at all. So there's a little bit of a learning curve to working with lightweight concretes and vermiculite in particular, the way that it feels, the way that it reacts with water, the way that you batch it and the way that it can collapse if you over mix it. There's a bunch of stuff that you need to know, but I hope that these tips have headed you down a path where you're going to be more likely to have success, less likely to have a, some sort of failure related to your vermiculite concrete experiment, please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel.